It's the next episode. Answer the question. See you guys this time. Damn it. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. No. Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. What? You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blabbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Acro planned and committed the murder all by himself. Order! Order! What the... What are you getting at? Why do you keep them on their toes, Nick? Now I'm gonna have to prove it all fits together somehow. I have to show how Acro murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can't do, and I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. Alright, then let's do it. Mr. Phoenix Wright. If this witness is the killer, then this eyewitness account is all lies, right? Mm, Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, where exactly was Mr. Dingling? He was obviously uh, here the entire time. That's... Acro's room? Pretty simple, eh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can only be one correct answer. Acro didn't leave, leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingling? It's an interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering that what you've proposed is impossible, yes, that's it. Is this gonna be the game over because you fucked up and I said yes, he does not have an accomplice? Uh. Or. I think I chose correctly. Okay, I, I just. I... <laughs> This is a lot. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there is no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. Hmm, you've got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. No, just his outfit was. Mm. Not him. Mo said he saw Max, didn't he? It does look like someone is kind of just pulling some ropes to, like, lift a thing, though. I mean, that's how they do... Magicians do fly, like, in actuality. They don't actually fly. They well, have right. wires. Yeah, Max know. himself said so yeah. yesterday. And also, if it was the bus that they were lifting through a, a large system of pulleys and ropes, somehow that would explain why it, you know, looked like he was... Floating and whatnot, like Ben and Trillo said, mm -hmm. and also why he didn't know they were greeting because, like, oh, you know, look like a big guy, look kind of like the remaster, but oh no, it's just a really big bust of Max. Hence, he the bust can't talk. That's why it didn't say anything. Wait, so you think you think that the bust was like just we being like wheeled to the crime scene or something? I don't know about wheeled necessarily, but like, like. Carried on and on like a fish pole or something. I guess it's such a stupid <laughs> idea. I didn't really want to go with it, but at the same time, like this is kind of what it sounds like it's leaning towards. I don't know how to prove that it was just on a rope to transfer the bus, but the idea that it was the bus that they encountered and everything to me makes sense because the ringmaster's room is in the back of the big top. They exited out toward the plaza, toward the lodging house. So clearly, something else is at work here. Then again, they did say that they encountered somebody wearing Max's costume, and you've said that that is the ringmaster. Yes. So, I... <laughs> well, never mind. I guess I was that theory. I just, I... Sorry. I'm grasping the straws. This is a very, very weird case. I, I, I'm just... I... How did Acro kill him if he stayed in the room? Well, uh... I know... Like, like, I know the bus is definitely involved somehow, either in... It being like there and then pulled up and away or something at the end of it to make it look like it was Max to implicate him further somehow or something of that nature. I know that was probably the bus that he pulled up past his window. Okay. 
is that not correct? I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, son of a bitch, I just... I mean, you could be right. I don't know what... I'm, <laughs> I need hints, okay? I'm not... I'm stupid, alright? I need some help here. You, okay, uh, fine. I'll... Am I right in anything I've, like, said or, like, amused about so far? Can you at least give me that? Some of the things you amused about were correct, yes. Can you be a little more specific? The... The thing that seemed to be flying was, in fact... Oh, shit! I'm oh, sorry. my goodness! I'm sorry, Eagle. You rolled over her tail! I'm sorry. Oh, my I goodness! Didn't I didn't mean to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really oh, oh, she seems to forgive you. The, the, <laughs> sorry. So the uh, thing that seems to be fine is the bus. I am correct in that. Yes. Okay. So maybe I was correct in that the box was in, or the bust was in the box. They opened it up. I'm not giving you any more hits past that, though. Shit. Wait, how would you do that all from above? Like, how would you... Shall we continue? Yeah, yeah. But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, how do you think that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. Hmm, how did he do it? Max the next course of course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick. If you mess up here. She's right. I can't mess up here. I gotta give this one serious thought. I'm sure that Acro killed the ringmaster. And he did it while he was in his room. No doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Nealon committed the crime, Mr. Wright. Uh, can I present this right now? Let's find out. I'm gonna present some evidence. So what does Mr. Dinglin use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem with the item is that... The problem is what... The, the problem is with the item oh, that's showing the picture. It. it was hoisted from above, dropped like in a cartoon rope act, Fell on him, made the thud, killed him, and then hoisted it back up like it was flying out of nowhere. The question is, though, the streetlight. He could have just hoisted it over the streetlight, and he's incredibly strong to be able to do it from his bed because he would only need the arms and to align him, you know, underneath it. And assuming it's a, a, a bust of Max, he's a tall dude, which means it would be kind of large. So for it to fall and kill a ringmaster... Okay, so that's where I was getting the whole dropping thing because of the loud thump and everything. I knew there had to be something dropped, but I was wrong in my assumption that it was the ringmaster that was dropped, not the item that killed him. Mm. And even then, I was sitting here thinking, well, maybe it was something about the box, not the bust itself. Okay. And it fell and it hit him on the back of the head, killed him, and that's why he slumped over. And yeah. that's why there's no footprints because it just... <sighs> nobody was even there. Correct. Okay. And he got the ringmaster to go because uh, to the murderer, like as in the murderer of the lion, which means that it's somebody he was upset with. Possibly. Acro tried to pin it on Regina because she was the one that cared for Leon and the lion and everything. And, you know, the ringmaster tearing it, part of it appearing in Acro's pocket would seem to implicate her as well because it continues to put it in the evidence in her hands and everything. And she just forgot about it. That seems a little suspicious. But... That being the case, the other half of it being in the tailor coat pocket of the ringmaster's suit implies that he and his daughter did not talk about it before he died. Because he went and he ripped off, you know, the pad of it from the cafeteria and everything where it was posted, where she hung it up because she thought, oh, hey, this must be somebody else's. Which means that to the murder was directed specifically to the ringmaster and it, told, it was told to have him meet them underneath the light at around 10 after practice and everything. Therefore, setting the stage, lights, camera, through the view of the window, action. There is one problem. What's up? Acro mentioned earlier that he can't really look down from his window. Why not? Because of the wheelchair. I mean... He, like, he can look like out his window, but not like directly below him. Well, 
thing is, it's not directly below his window, is it? It is. It is. Like, to, okay. Which means that in order for Akro to have committed this thing using the holy system like I'm thinking about, it means that he would have to have somehow kind of in his wheelchair already or otherwise made his way across the room and pulled the whole thing. I'm so close here. <laughs> anyway, shall we continue? I gotta pee. Oh, okay. I'm sorry uh, for me ranting and the game not really going anywhere. But that's I, fine. I'll, I'll pause the recording. Yeah, Alright, we're back, and Donnie's done musing. Oh, you didn't record my whole little rant that no, I wanted? No, I, I didn't. I'm sorry. No. Do you want to say it again? No, no. I, I, I want to make sure that it plays out like I think it does before I really get too deep into it, but... Okay, well... Couple, there's a couple small pieces I'm not 100% certain on. Alright. The boss... It's quite a large bust, and because it is life-size, it is also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death. Especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> See? This is how Akro was able to kill the Ringmaster. With the force of gravity and Maximilian's set ample bust. Order, order. So you're saying the bus fell onto the ringmaster? A rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it would be incredibly easy to commit. How could you possibly wheel a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible. It's a wheelchair. Mm. First of all, in <laughs> well, Acro is an acrobat. He should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like that bus. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? Well... Akko's at a loss for words. He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Well, 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 Akro. You can't run away from things. Ow! I need to watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Testimony, you say? On Karma. She's just using this testimony as a rouse to stop her time. Ruse. Ruse, yes. There is absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled. Why can't he see things my way once in a while? Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. Ah, this woman will sink to any low to win the case. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bus. I have strong upper body from working as an acrobat, and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bus and looking out the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the Ringmaster's head. Thus, it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bus on him, don't you think? Hmm. I have no doubts in regard to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bus and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could not have known the location of the Ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. Uh, I can't let it get to me. I've got to focus. Have you ever lifted the bus before? No, I've never actually lifted it with my own two hands. But I should get to it, don't you think? I can't let money on money outdo me on this. Can money even like? I mean, I guess he could carry the, like the tube or something. Yeah, we're, I, I asked this question earlier. I mean, yeah, money. That crazy monkey has lifted the back of his bus before, so I guess it is possible. I guess. 
or at least he's probably lifting something of equal weight. Mm. The heaviest thing I saw in there was the tuba, though, so I don't... And tuba... I mean, there's also, like, the... the but it's not necessarily that heavy. There's also the motorcycle engine. Muffler. Muffler. Which, uh, again, it, long, but not necessarily that heavy. Meh. Oh. Please continue with your testimony, Mr. Dingling. I am uh, strong. No, sorry, I don't have to read that. So, what have you been doing to keep in shape? Well, honestly, I've given up on training. I don't have any plans to return to the trampeze or the tightrope. You don't say. But, no offense, I'm not worried about losing to you in a race or anything. Neither am I, Mr. Phoenix writes. I wouldn't lose either, Sopo. I mean, Nick. Whoa, whoa, whoa! When does, how does this discussion turn about to me all of a sudden? I suppose you could say that I'm stronger than the average bear. Okay, Yogi. <laughs> Is that a literal? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> And why is that? Because if I were to do that, I'd end up falling out of the window myself. And I still haven't gotten much feeling back in my legs yet. Hmm. So you could have thrown that bus out of the window. And that's why I was thinking maybe he didn't throw it, he was hoisted and whatnot with a rope system. Okay. And if it's directly above his window and everything, theoretically, like, if it's like quite literally directly below his window, the bus is big enough, it probably would take up most of the space in the window itself, so he wouldn't have to be specific, just drop it on him. And then use a rope to lift the... He still, back wouldn't, up. he still wouldn't be able to see the headmaster's head, though, right? Again, ringmaster. he wouldn't need to, because the ringmaster, he's a large enough guy that if he's just standing underneath the light, and the bus is as big as they say it is, he just has to drop it when the ringmaster's there. But how Which, do you know when the rain master's there? The light's coming on because they're safety lights. They activate when there's movement. Okay. That's the best working theory that I have right now. If I'm wrong, let me know, I guess, but... I won't tell you or you're wrong, but I mean, I won't tell you you're right either. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyway. How long do you think your recovery will take? Hmm. You have to remember that my nerves are severely damaged. I'm currently undergoing some extremely intensive rehabilitation, but it's still going to take a while before I'm back to 100%. Let me remind you of another very important point. If the witness was carrying the bus, he would not be able to see out the window below. Why do you say it would be impossible? Allow me to explain. You accept that if I was carrying the bus, I couldn't see out below the window. Thus, there is no way that I would know the location of the ringmaster's head. Well, I suppose you got a point. Hey, Nick. Huh? What if you turn things around? Maybe if you think of it sort of like this. If he knew the location of the ringmaster's head, then he could drop the bust. Why the hell did I just get a random security report? It's not even telling me that there's anything wrong. You're just like, oh, look at it. Oh, yeah, your thing is protecting you. Yeah, thanks. I, I really need that in the middle of a recording. Whatever. Definitely. <laughs> anyway. That does make sense. If only I could prove somehow that Acker knew the location of Ringmaster's head without looking down. And see, again, it's bright enough. It would see through the blizzard. That's the reason why I keep relying on the light, because I don't know what else it could have possibly been. All right, Donna, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not the light. The lights are on all the time. Oh. They don't just, like, turn on when someone's near. They're just always on. That's oh. why I said it makes it sometimes hard for him to sleep. I figured that with the movement and everything of people being low going home, like Mo, for instance, you know, he'd be entering the same area. I figured maybe he might have turned the lights on and then it would have shut off eventually. But... It was a good theory. It was a good theory. <sighs> Damn it. So then there's going to be some sort of other signal to let him know that he's right below the window. I think I've already explained things sufficiently. If all you had to do was drop it, then it wouldn't have been a problem at all. If all I had to do was drop it, you're right, I could have done that. However, there's no way I could land a direct hit on the ringmaster's head. So that kind of makes your theory a bit pointless, doesn't it, Mr. Knight? Can I go strong enough to lift up the bust? But ain't it the ringmaster's head? 
Hmm, I wonder if he used some kind of tool to enter the ringmaster. That's a ticket, Nick. Show them what you've got. I have to be careful. I have to find something that fits perfectly with the case. I was finding any sort of tool, but maybe we ever left something. Macro, you didn't really need to lean out the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, may I ask. You're silly hinting at things as pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling. How about you show us some evidence? But, but I did such a good job hinting. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. Map, I'm assuming, or, uh. This key, the key here, is the wooden box. The, the same, same wooden box. Wooden box that was found. The victim was found hunched over. The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means that this, this wooden box was placed at or was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bus came falling down was exactly the moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean... if the bus were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box... There would be no way it could miss the head of the victim. No! So basically, all he had to do was wait until he heard the box open. Oh. That seems incredibly arbitrary to be able to, like... Hmm. Order, order, order! This is unbelievable! No, I, I definitely understand that that... Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going. There's only one way to do go from here. Forward. Well, then, did Acro put the box there previously at some point? Oh. If you remember, I... the note said to meet him there at a specific time. Right. Um, ten. He yeah. put the box there. Uh, but then went back to his room mm -hmm. and waited until he arrived. And then he just waited for, I guess, the sound of the box to open? And But once he knows that the box is being opened, he knows that that's when the target is directly underneath. Right. And then he just drops it out the window and then, what, hauls it back up with a rope? Oh. I, I always kind of figured that the bust, even though it was heavy, was kind of fragile, so I figured it would shatter upon you know, impact um, or something. It's apparently made out of pretty sturdy material. Yeah, I'm kind of understanding that now. I just... It looked like it was made out of, like, a mixture of, like, glass and jade and maybe some, like, light stone or something or metal, but... I... Uh... I mean, maybe it was made out of brass that's rusted over time and turned green. But why are the cards all white still? Um, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter too awful much, honestly. So the next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow! Doesn't that make whip some sense into you? Mr. Oh, sorry. Mr. Phoenix writes... Ow, ow, ow! The ringmaster's head couldn't have been anywhere when you lifted the box. That's why the box was specifically made. Specially made? Indeed. It had the most peculiar faces, uh, the feature. Uh, the contents, I'm assuming? Because it's about the lock, isn't it? Maybe the weight, actually, because it's heavy, so the headmaster wouldn't be able to just pick it up and move it somewhere else. Oh, it would, ha yes. would have to open up right then and there. Oh, maybe. The box was remar uh, box had remarkable weight. Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds by itself. Just to lift up this wooden box, we required... Oh, I see. Well, we'll have to squat down, then lift it up with their body, wouldn't you say? It is also kind of a large, like, 
mm. bulky thing, so I, I guess so. So maybe not waiting to hear it open, but maybe waiting to hear it be picked up. I guess. Or him struggling to bend down and pick it up, or maybe he's messing with the lock or something to try and open it. Mm. Yeah. That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. So to lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Fool! Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. Did you, did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? It was in the cafeteria. Mm, of course I remember. It's on the top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Then what happened to it? I'd like to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I cannot possibly leave the Lavening House by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? Money. Money. You literally pointed out earlier that money was able to lift it. So, I mean, you right. kind of dug your own grave there. Also, it's super shiny and everything. Like, yeah. nobody else was going to lift it anyway, so... Yeah. I mean, Miss Mutt will probably wouldn't have broke it, but I don't see him stealing it. Hmm. You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright, explain that. Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Ah. Tell us exactly how the witness could have carried the bust from the cafeteria. Yep, we definitely have a problem here, but there's no place to get. This is no place to get perplexed. I've got to have my wits about me and prove things happen once and for all. That's you. Well, all right, Mr. Wright. Let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bust from the cafeteria back to his room? How did she gathers all Simon? What? Shiny objects. Yeah. Uh. Monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own, and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? But the bust was brought up. Bronze isn't all that shiny, and then there's the super bright metal cards and everything on it that mm. are made of probably some sort of stainless steel or otherwise, yeah, know, like rust proof metal, which are super shiny still. Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. Why, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they're made of platinum, which is very shiny. Yes, it is. Gua! Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. So the rest of it is made out of bronze, like I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. If he wasn't able to handle that all out himself, I'd be on, in, on the market for a new roommate. Order, order. I said order. Miss Von Karma. Where is the bus in question at this moment? Um, um... Um, I, um, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Mm -hmm. This is all a rather strange turn of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. Then you mean this bust was the murder weapon purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe after I saw Money's mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we're, we've more than proven one crucial fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. Moron!
Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! Don't seem so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know! You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Gah! There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. Well, that's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. White? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this, and only this, Mr. Phoenix writes. Who was the murderer the clown saw? He saw Max's but Ow! I asked who was the other person Mo saw on the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Ah, contraire, mon frere. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Ma Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. Uh, how is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw was not that night was Max's bus. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak! There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bus. It would be easy to hang one, of the, one off of the cards in the bus's hands. Idiot! Who in the right mind would put a cloak on the bus? It doesn't matter who put it on the bus. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? That question is of the utmost importance to this case. Don't you agree? Oh, he caught me. So, let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? We'll find out who put it on the bus in the next episode. Damn, what a cliffhanger. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.